Hello art friends, Melissa here with another Tim Holtz paper doll story. This entry includes a lot of ephemera from the Tim Holtz kits as well. As usual you'll find a list of all the supplies used in the description box below the video. Just click the show more button to expand it and view it. If you've watched my other paper doll videos you know that I love what I call the sitters and finding things for them to sit on. I paired this sitter up with a bird image from one of my favorite stamp companies, Red Lead Paperworks. So there was a lot of behind the scenes work for this layout before I even started the background in video. When possible, I like to create focal point clusters and get a general idea of my composition before I get started on the background. Sometimes that helps me decide where to place color or patterns in the background and I frequently move the clusters back on the layout throughout the development of the background. I also had already written the poem and created the journaling in a free Microsoft Word document. If you like the poem and the font I used, I can send you a copy in the form of a Microsoft Word document. Just like the video and leave me a comment and I'll share my email with you. I started by sorting through my Tim Holtz ephemera and deciding on a color scheme. I placed the blue flowers at the base of the log and that determined my color scheme. I used watercolors to color the bird and created my clusters using ephemera from the Keepsakes, Botanicals, Field Notes, Collector, and Salvage Tags Tim Holtz Ideology Ephemera Packs. I started the background by randomly placing collage from a math book, a planner, and an old textbook. I used matte medium to glue it down to the pages. I also had a pile of white tissue paper that I had stamped background images on in black ink. That's the floral and the key patterns that you see. I wanted a little green and blue in the background to match my clusters. Some of the green is random ephemera from my stash and the green music pattern is a background stamp. All the ephemera is adhered with matte medium and then I start knocking it back with gesso and a foam brush. I use Liquitex gesso and it's pretty translucent. I used at least two coats, drying in between, and then started pouncing on more around the edges of the ephemera to hide the harsh edges. I varied how much and where I added the gesso over the ephemera so that there were some parts that were still easy to see. Next I was ready to start adding some blue. I stenciled blue paint over one of my Tim Holtz stencils onto white tissue paper. I like doing the stenciling on the tissue paper instead of directly on the page when I'm not sure exactly where I want to add the color. I can tear up pieces and move it around on the background until I'm happy with the placement, then adhere it with some matte medium. I also stamp some Tim Holtz images on tissue paper with blue dye ink. When you get ready to tear the tissue, apply a line of water where you want to tear it and it makes the process so much easier. After getting all that adhered down, I added more gesso to knock it back and get that dreamy look. If I left the background too busy, the journaling would not stand out enough. Another tip, take a picture of where your focal points and in this case where my journaling would be. Then after you remove it, you can use the photo as a reference for helping you place the ephemera. So these are some close-up photos of where the layout is at this point and before I started knocking it back with some super heavy gesso. The pattern tissue paper that is lighter was stamped with dye ink using the stamp set fragments by Tim Holtz and Stampers Anonymous. I also used an older stamp called Game Pieces. At this point the background is still really busy. It was time to seriously knock this back and I did it with some super heavy gesso. It's thicker, will add some texture, and covers easier than the regular gesso. So while you're watching me add the super heavy gesso, I'm going to go ahead and read the journaling. She dreamed of flying and soaring and dancing on clouds of white, nowhere to be resting on branches at night. She dreamed of singing a song just like a bird expressing her joy without speaking a word. She dreamed of floating up high, writing invisible words in the sky, touching rainbows and never wondering why. She dreamed of soaring to lands far, far away, where hate did not live and love had a say. 
So one of the things I did to help keep all those little words in order while waiting to be placed on the page was to put a little double-sided tape on the back of them and then stick them to a piece of palette paper. If you're a paper doll lover as well, then check out my dedicated playlist in my library just for those layouts. All my videos are organized by either theme or the manufacturer of the major products that I use in the project. I love the Tim Holtz ephemera, but I don't like the white border around the edges of some of the pieces. So I use precision tip scissors by Fiskars and an X-Acto knife to trim around and remove that. The florals and butterflies still have the white border here, but notice on the final project, they don't. So while you're watching me add the super heavy gesso, I wanted to share another way to keep up with when I post projects. I have a blog and I post all of my still photos, supply list, and videos there as well. You can get the blog post emailed to you by subscribing to the blog. And you can actually watch the videos directly from that post without hopping over to YouTube. You can subscribe by adding your email address to the Feed Blitz tool in the upper left corner of my blog. Then hop over to your email and click the link to confirm your subscription. You can unsubscribe at any time. I'm also posting journal layouts over there that I don't have videos for. For example, right now I'm taking the Wonderlust class and all those layouts are on the blog. If you're inspired by today's project, I'd appreciate you giving it a thumbs up and leaving me a quick comment. Most YouTube makers, like myself, aren't making money doing this and have spent a lot of money on cameras, lighting, editing programs, etc. A lot goes into the editing process and putting the videos together, so when you like and leave comments, it encourages creators to keep making videos. So thank you so much for your encouragement and for helping me to grow my channel. After I finished adding the super heavy gesso and let it dry, I inked the edges of the ephemera and edges of the pages with brown ink, then adhered everything in place using Aileen's tacky glue. The phrases are from the Tim Holtz Ideology Collection as well. He has several journaling helps with phrases that are stickers, so they're really easy to use. Um, the ones I used today are from a set called Small Talks, and I got mine at Hobby Lobby. That wraps up today's project. I hope you were inspired and I'll see you next time.